Installation of the rum bucks. First, strip the bike. Crash bars all gone. The rubber grommets you take out and will be installed onto the new frame. I've also removed the auxiliary LED lights. I'm going to put them on the bars themselves away from the bike so if I have another crash at least they won't bend anything on the bike itself. The rumbucks is the sacrificial lamb. Right. As per the kit you start off with the top frame first. I went with a high gloss polyurethane finish. I'm partially testing this for rumbux as well. Those are the original rubber stoppers, grommets, butt plugs, whatever you want to call them. They go here. And this must go then up here. Should be easy enough. Well, I went for the full kit. There's the bash plate. High gloss black. Looks good. It's a little thin. Not as thick as the KTM OEMs, but I think it should hold up. Well, it'll protect my stupid ass for certain. To the bike. Okay, for this install, I've taken off pretty much everything already. Uh, they do recommend that you disconnect the rear brake because you also have to take off the foot picks, which is a pain in the ass, let's face it here, because you have to take out the spring. Forget it. One thing I have not seen with this kit, because if you have the 1190R, and this is where the bash plate, the original OEM sits, there's nothing to uh, how do we say, close this off. There's no end cap for it. So I'm going to be purchasing a couple of bolts. The size is M10, most probably by 10 or by 20. I tried the 30s, there's about a centimeter and more of a gap. So I just want those things closed off. You don't want any rust, any dirt getting in there because that's a pain in the ass to get out again. So just for safety's sake. Plus, on the other side, the side stand is connected here. So now there's nothing connecting it. I have not seen any bolts uh, in the kit to take care of this, but regardless. The kit comes with, oh, if you have a, a normal 1190, you will need this. This is for the oil filler cap. The 1190R already has this, so it's a nice touch. Bolts, extension brackets, Looks good. Ah, looks like the powder coated didn't pay attention here. Yeah. Oh well. Tools is pretty much what you need. Loctite you still need. Loctite 243, not 242. We're going for the stronger stuff. And you get a nice manual on how to do this. Although, look, this is a digital age. I would have liked to have a PDF file, full color because uh, it's grainy and yeah. Look, don't call me spoiled, first world problem. I'd like to have an iPad next to me with full color instructions. Yeah, I know, I'm a numb nuts. Okay, what else? Well, that's pretty much it. We're gonna start the installation. I'm gonna go through it piece by piece. Right, top bars are in position. What have I learned so far? These rubber grommets are a great help. See what you do from the bottom, you push the bars, and you make sure you align these and just smack them up there. They'll hold the bars while you go to the top and quickly put these bolts in. Again, nothing is tightened, everything is loose, which is as it should be. Do not tighten anything. With my stupidity, I know. I'll probably have to take it all off and start again. Oh, uh, part of the tools, a torque wrench. You will need to torque some of the nuts down to 45 Newton meters. We'll get there. 
we are going to attempt the bash plate. Instruction manual says it works great if one person, which means you need a helper. Well, let's see. If I can do it, any idiot can do it. My double-digit IQ will assist me in performing this great feat. The best thing is this kit comes with split pins to replace the ones you've bent over. Problem is, this is for OEM. Uh, it might work for these black dog cycle works. We'll figure it out. Okay. Looks relatively straightforward. Goes there. This. Uh, there. And this. There. Maybe I should get my two-year-old to help me. Okay, quick update. If you're doing this by yourself, eh, it's doable. What you need is a little bit of patience. Take it slow. A size 13 USA boot helps also immensely. The manual says from the bottom, I found it. If you go from this angle, Get this through the engine first. As soon as it's round about here, you can just gently lever the pan through. Be careful here that you don't scratch it like I've done again. And once that is done, you can stop holding it. You put your size 13 or equivalent under here to hold it in place, and you just tighten these two. That'll hold it in place. And I found putting this bolt just loose in here makes your life a little bit easier. All right, so nearly done. Time for the other side. Oh, before I forget, the bolt I was referring to for the OEM bash plate, uh, right there. And as you can see, if we go underneath, your center, uh, your side stand is right there, which is a bit of a problem because now I've installed the bash plate, I don't think I can get to it. And I haven't bought the bolts. What to do, what to do, what to do. Ah, got an idea. So, after hobnobbing about a bit, I ended up using the bolt, which the kit supplies so you can fit this bracket on a normal 1190. And, using a bit of glue, I took a couple of spacers and made a shim. So now it fits nice and snug. Bit of Loctite, 100%. Drawback, I had to take this bloody thing off again. Okay, nearly done. And it's beginning to look a lot like Hanukkah. Foot pegs don't need to be installed, the rear brake. Okay, one little snag with the foot pegs. The bottom bolt was about a millimeter too thick. The foot peg fits, not a problem, but as soon as you put the spring in, then it becomes problematic. So, if you got non OEM foot pegs, this may be a step you need to do. But it's easy, you take the bolt to your bastard file and get it done. Any further problems? Um, not really. Actually, I think it was pretty easy. Just trying to remember that you had to tighten these bolts. <sighs> tighten the rest. Tighten the ones underneath the fairing. Little tip though. I will tighten these things. What was it, 45 Newton meters? Last. Because when you tighten these, you can actually see the frame pulling together towards the bike. So it is a little bit under stress, but it should work. Cons, anything bad about this thing? Not really. I suppose the biggest drawback is that you now need more tools in your toolkit. 
because you need Allen keys, you need sockets to fit those. Worst case scenario, but it's really not a big deal. Looking underneath, free advertising. Unfortunately, the Raptor kit you get for the KTMs, um, what is it called, SW Motec brackets, regardless, but the lights that mount under here, not compatible with this. But seeing you've got now so much area to mount lights, I don't see it as a drawback. I might actually consider putting the lights here, maybe here. That's coming up next. With the kit, you get a pair of these. Nice. It'll help. Yeah, so Rumbucks, proudly made in South Africa, being exported. Solid product. I gotta say, I like it a lot more than the SW Motec or the Turotec stuff because it also puts this bar in front of this little bastard so it can't shear off as easily. It's still gonna happen. Personally, I'm surprised that no aftermarket company has come up with some sort of little cage or maybe just a blanking plate of aluminum that fits here just to protect it. Maybe a little cage like this. If this thing shears off and you're in the middle of fucking nowhere, you've got no replacement, petrol or fuel, whatever you want to call it, just pisses out and you can't ride the bike. Best thing you can do, if it shears off here, put your bike on the ground, let it go over the hot exhaust, pray that it ignites and you've got a Viking funeral and insurance can pay for a new bike. Yep. So, go have a look at Rumbux. They manufacture for BMW, KTM, uh, the new Honda, uh, twin, yada, 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 thousand, yada, 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 Africa twin. And what else? BMW, KTM. Are there any brands that make adventure tours? Or adventure tours? Oh, Triumph is not yet included. Not a big market for the British. So, yeah. Solid. Oh, and before anyone asks why I didn't go for KTM Orange, because I'm not a fucking fanboy that needs to have everything in orange to support a certain brand.